I'm here at HPE Discover with Simon Leach, and security, of course, is something that's always a big IT consideration. And I mean, there are there are things like GDPR that are driving greater awareness around particular types of security right now. But is is just being compliant with something like GDPR or with PCI compliance for credit card processing good enough? So, so let's start off by saying that it's, it's really good that we're seeing more and more compliance requirements because it does make business leaders more aware of the fact that they need to do something about security in order to stay in business. The challenge that we've experienced with a, a number of the customers that we've spoken to is that people do just enough. So they invest just enough in security to make themselves, for example, PCI compliant. Um, but they don't really make that into a sustainable, repeatable security management program. So as an example, uh, Target Corporation, when they were breached at the end of 2013, they were PCI compliant. They'd done all of the work they needed to do from the, uh, from the PCI assessor's perspective to make themselves um, eligible to, to, to transact with customer credit card numbers. But yet, a month later, they got breached and you know, multi-million, I think it was 70 million credit card numbers got stolen. Uh, from their infrastructure. So although they'd invested a lot of money in, in security tooling and security capabilities to become compliant, um, what organize, organizations need to avoid happening is that they stop their compliance program at the point where they get the certificate. And what I'm discussing with customers at the moment, particularly from a GDPR perspective, is look, you're going to be getting a lot of budget to make yourselves GDPR compliant, but don't stop your compliance efforts there. Use the budget to invest in a repeatable security management program. Base it around some of the well-known security frameworks, for example, something like ISO 2701002 or the NIST 800-53 cybersecurity framework, so that you can not only satisfy your business leaders that you are GDPR compliant, but also take the appropriate steps so that you can repeat that. So the next time uh, a new regulation comes along, you can already show people, look, we've already done the work we need to because we've got a security management program in place and that's really going to help you. So what do those, those steps look like for somebody who wants to go above and beyond just being compliant? Well, it's really um, taking, uh, obviously taking a look at the requirements from that compliance standard, but it's looking at how they would make sense to an ongoing security program. So you've got frameworks, you know, the, the frameworks are pretty prescriptive in terms of what they want you to do. So it's you, for example, put things in place like have a vulnerability management program or um, make sure that you're uh, running the latest versions of software or making sure you have firewalls or IPS or endpoint security solutions on your systems, making sure you have the appropriate uh, reporting metrics in place so that you can prove that those investments are working. But what you do see is that a lot of that is very much paper-based. And this is something I, I sort of refer to as strategic compliance management. I think in addition to that, it's, it's, it's very interesting for customers to also look at some of the tactical controls that they can use. So it's one thing saying, yes, I've got a desktop firewall in place. And, and to give you an example, um, you know, years ago I worked at an antivirus vendor and we sold desktop firewalls and I went along to a customer to do a health check of that desktop firewall. Um, and he'd recently passed his PCI certification. But the first rule in his desktop firewall was, 0.0.0.0, allow all traffic to 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0, .0. Right, so he, he'd, he'd done what he needed to do to satisfy PCI, he had a desktop firewall. But that desktop firewall was providing him limited value. So what we're suggesting is look at some tactical measures that will actually prove that those controls are working for you. Um, for example, we work together with uh, one of the HP Pathfinder companies, an organization called Synac, which provides crowdsource penetration testing. So um, as customers develop their own applications, you know, if you develop your own app in-house, you can't rely on someone like Microsoft to come along and patch the vulnerabilities because Microsoft didn't create them. You created them yourselves. But what a penetration testing service will allow you to do is to test yourself to identify those vulnerabilities before the hacker does. We also work with an organization, another Pathfinder company, called SafeBreach. And what SafeBreach does is they do breach and attack simulation. And what this allows us to do for our customers is to install simulators around their network and then launch attack scripts against those simulators. So you get a dashboard view of where, if we were to be breached and somebody were to use that, pa that vulnerability that we haven't patched, how would they be able to get data out of our environment? So it's effectively a form of showing how the attack vectors would work without damaging any of the assets and working in a purely simulated environment.
So I want to go back to something you said a little bit earlier, which was um, crowdsourced penetration testing. Yeah. That, it, how do you get businesses comfortable with that, that idea? Because that sounds that sounds scary. Sure. So the way that Synac works is they have a huge crowdsource. So they have, I think, 700 plus uh, researchers worldwide um, who can be called upon to, to, to perform a penetration testing. And um, they will choose the penetration testers that get involved in a job based upon their skill sets. But more importantly, it's the way they actually vet those researchers to accept them to the program. Because, yeah, as you say, it can be a concern to work with a crowdsource model where you don't know who is going to be doing the, the penetration testing against your organization. But for each of the researchers that they accept onto their program, they've done a full um, uh, check, a background check, you know, employment history, um, uh, criminal records, uh, so social security background checks, um, etc., social media checks, etc., etc., to get a very good impression of that person. And they also make sure they undergo a number of te technical assessments as well to check that they really have the abilities to do the job that they want to, want to do. And um, they only accept about one in ten of the researchers that apply to the program. So it sort of shows the type of quality of these researchers. And as some evidence of, of how well that is accepted, one of their large customers is actually the US government um, as part of Hack the Hack the Pentagon um, project that was launched a couple of years ago. And Synac does a lot of that crowdsource penetration testing for them. So in, so in theory, if the US government trusts them, then they're, they're probably reasonably... Yeah, I know that's not an assumption that will, will hold true all over the world, but um, <laughs> you know, it, it certainly shows that they are able to deliver a quality of research that will satisfy what I would consider to be one of the most stringent uh, governments in terms of security work. So what, is, uh, what does Point Next specifically do to help in this sort of um, bridging the gap between strategic and tactical? So, so Point Next, in addition to working with, with the Pathfinder partners I mentioned, we also offer a number of um, services around compliance assessments. So for example, we have a service called the Continuous Security Improvement Service, which uh, provides a gap analysis against ISO 27001 and helps the customer to create a roadmap that will help them go from where they are today with their current status to where they need to be to become fully compliant against that standard. And we'll also deliver um, additional services around, for example, the crowdsource penetration testing service, in fact in two ways. So one is in, is in the interpretation of the results. So you'll get back a report from, from Synac that shows you where the holes are. Our point next researchers will help the customer to understand those holes and help them to remediate those holes. But we also have an additional deployment model where if the customer is really not satisfied about using crowdsource pen testers, we can actually use the Synac platform to deliver our researchers to do the penetration testing for them. So in some cases that can work a little bit better if they trust uh, their HP point next researchers uh, uh, slightly more. All right, well, thanks, Simon. Excellent. Thanks for your time.